Hi gamers, uh, checking in again. We're a little late on this wrap up. Uh, we played last Sunday, so that's been a week ago now. I've been doing these video wrap ups usually the day after, a couple days after. So it's been a little bit extra uh, since then. It's been a full week. Um, so I wanted to check in and just do that wrap up. I had a new player, uh, Paul. Uh, seems like a great addition. I met with him the day before and uh, brought him in and things went pretty well. I was also missing a player, uh, my neighbor Mike, uh, who plays a half-elf rogue, Uriel. Uh, he was not there, not able to attend, uh, some, some sickness in the family. So uh, yeah, so we still had three players instead of four, which is what I've been working on. Um, we were playing still uh, Lost Mine of Fandelver. And um, we were we had left off in the Red Brand hideout, so they were they were stuck in the Red or they were they had snuck their way into the Red Brand hideout and and basically executed um, Glass Staff uh, Yarno Yarno Albrecht of uh, the Lord's Alliance. So they had basically they had, they interrogated and executed him uh, as good guys do, you know, and uh, so. We left it there. What do you want to do? Uh, so they decided that they wanted to kind of clean the hideout a little bit more because they were still pretty fresh. So the first thing they did from Albrecht's bedroom was that they went into the potion library or potion workshop where he's working on invisibility potions. So they go in there, and that's where I introduced Paul's character, who is uh, 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 Ancient One's paladin. So he was in there, he, he, his background was that he was a brewer, and at one point he'd been taken as a slave by the Zenerum, so he was basically a free man uh, who wanted to work on brewing, and he's kind of in this depressed area. So he was hired in by Yarno and, uh, for his brewing expertise to help with the potions, because he had herbalism and alchemy and brewing on a paladin, I don't know. So uh, the story was that Yarno had snuck him in through the back door by the halfling farm. And uh, so he didn't really know that Yarno was glass staff and in charge of the red brands. And he didn't know that he was in the red brand hideout. He thought he was in like a wizard's workshop. He was in a wizard's stronghold, keep, whatever, like wizard's sanctum. Um, and was and was hired by by Yarno Albrecht of the Lord's Alliance. He thought he was working for a good guy and helping him to figure out uh, potions and stuff. His main thing is that he figures out healing potions. He wants to make healing potions, uh, which is a little more in line for a dwarven paladin. So he wants to brew up really strong ales that heal people too. So whatever, as I'm working on that. So they got together, they they slid out of there, um, killed some people, fed it to the Nothic, uh, continued to clean room after room, um, you know, uh, like they, they would interrogate a person and then let them go and the Nothic would eat them, or uh, various like con contrivances. Um, they basically cleaned out everybody i think there was like one room they didn't go into but they did go uh free the slaves of the i kept calling him a leather worker but he wasn't a leather worker i think he's a woodworker maybe um the the guy who stood up to the red brands in, in uh Fandolin and, and was was murdered uh so his his wife and children were kidnapped and they were going to be sold into slavery so uh the dwarf was all about freeing them <clears throat> so they freed all of them. Uh, they returned to the farm, to Darren's farm. Um, you know, uh, Darren was very excited. Um, and they actually, it was morning at that time when they came out. Because, uh, again, they just really didn't have any rest or pauses, which is, like, I, I do really like the tempo that we're going through this. So... They were like, oh, yeah, you know, the horses got killed a day ago. It was like yesterday. It was like, you know, like 30 hours ago. So, like, we're keeping track of the time. Uh, so, at this point, like, they've they've kind of figured out where Cragmaw Castle is. But they don't think that uh, Gundren's made it there yet. 
So they're like, you know, maybe we could cross and beat them off at the pass, and maybe we could, you know, there's all they've got like all these different options because the tempo is just really, really rapid. Um, so they went back into Fandolin. Uh, they had a hero's greeting at the inn. They basically partied all night. Uh, everybody from the whole town came out. They were all so excited. They're the heroes. And I used that as an opportunity to... So the, the party could advance all the different story plot lines and pick up any plot lines that they had missed. So, um, you know, they basically they finished the Red Brands and everybody came to them with their problems or alluded to their problems and talked to me later. So, like, it, they kind of were able to engage with everything at that time. So at this point, like, they have all the information about Fandolin and all of the NPCs and story hooks there. Um, even though they haven't necessarily done the quests. Um, and then they, oh yeah, so they took a, they took a long rest and then they went in and killed the Nothic because they were, they, they wanted to leave the Nothic alone, but at the same time they wanted to make sure the Nothic wasn't a threat. And what happened was they took the long rest, and then the only person they hadn't really met with was the halflings at the farm. So they went to the halfling farm because the paladin knew that they'd come in through the back entrance and knew like that was behind the halfling farm. And so they went to the halfling farm and met like the 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 lay Colleen or Canine or what a whatever her name is. Um, had met her and she was really nice and, and matronly and then met the kid and the kid was super cute and they were like that's not cool like we can't have like a boogeyman living in the woods behind this farm like that is just not like that's not something good guys do right so they uh, they decided that they needed to go take care of that so they went in there and um, you know I was playing Mike's rogue as DM NPC I mean um, he wasn't here, but he's kind of the leader of the party. Like, we kind of needed him. Uh, he's, he's the best rogue. I mean, we have an artificer, but the artificer can't, um, perceive anything. Like, there's a lot of things that, you know, he, he's not so good with, um, with the, with disabling things. So, uh, yeah, I played, I played Mike's character and, and didn't really play him all that well. And then we're ready for the Nothic and, and you know they basically were like you're the guy so he went up and like offered him magic we had several scrolls so he was going to give him the scrolls and did like a sleight of hand and attacked him so he got like a little surprise first uh sneak attack and then um yeah basically just tore the guy up um they hit him with fairy fire Luckily, so they hit him with fairy fire. That gave him advantage. So I think he get, was getting sneak attack on every one of those too. And then um, they'd hit him with a bless, and they'd hit him with something, shield faith maybe. They they like he had several buffs going, and everybody else was uh, pretty much flame bolt. And uh, they took out the Nothic. In like three turns, the Nothic took off, and then they they shot him from the ledge and killed him and recovered the magic sword. So. It was, it was like, it was, we could end it early, and I was like, okay, well, let's end early, because I got a hard stop at 7, I need to go do something, and they were like, okay, we really want to go kill the Nothic, I was like, okay, well, let's try to do it quick, so we went, and we killed the Nothic, and we went a half an hour over my time, but that was okay, you know, it was, it was fun for everybody, everybody said they had a great time, etc., 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 thanks for doing it, um, Paul said it was a good time, in reflection, afterwards, well, before I get there, um, the next the next stuff is they they can go take out the orcs on the trade route. They can uh, maybe that's Wyvern Tor. Wyvern Tor, I think, is the is the adventure hook. Um, they can go to Old Alwell, uh, which is the adventure hook from Darren Elderman Elder Elderson Elder the cider guy. Right? To us, he's the cider house guy. So uh, Darren is the Order of the Gauntlet. Um, with the orchard and the cider farm. Uh, so they kind of want to go do that as a favor to him for putting them up and being like their contact and safe haven and stuff like that, even though it's not on the way to Cragmont Castle. 
And then uh, the other one is Thunder Tree. So Thunder Tree is where the druid lives. They know that from the halfling. And um, they also know because they freed the, the wood carver's wife. She told them where the heirloom was hidden in Thunder Tree. So they kind of want to go to Thunder Tree to get recover the heirloom. I think when I played through as a player, we recovered the heirloom and then gave it to 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 the widow. It was like, sorry, your husband's dead. Here's enough money to live on your whole life kind of thing. I don't know if these guys are going to do that, so I'm kind of interested to play that out. Um, so they want to go to Thunder Tree talk to the druid, get the heirloom, and that's on the way to Cragmaw Castle, which they now know where Cragmaw Castle is, and they know where the Wave Echo Cave is because they interrogated the bugbears. So they killed the two bugbears and kept the kept the boss bugbear, and, um, yeah, interrogated him. Did they let him go? They, they might have let him go. I'm not really sure exactly what they did with the bugbear. I think they probably killed him, but I'm just not positive. Um, yeah, so I think they're going to go to Thunder Tree. They've already rested. They'll probably just set right out. Uh, I'm going to try through Discord say, you know, whatever you want to do, let's do that. And then we'll pick it up en route to Thunder Tree. Um, and in Thunder Tree is where I have my OP dungeon. So I have a dungeon... Uh, that ties in with a green dragon. So basically, I'm going to let them disturb the green dragon, and the green dragon's going to give them a proposition. And basically, they're going to go on a little tomb raid full of traps and a uh, fight. And then hopefully, they'll be able to get a little bit of loot. Maybe. We'll have to see how it plays out. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's what it really is, is it's a. Uh, it's a tomb, like a recent tomb with a mummy in it and some traps. So I'm still I'm still drawing that up. You know, I originally did it for 2nd edition and then 3rd edition, and then now I'm doing it in 5th edition. And it's like, I don't know if it's getting better or worse. We'll have to see. So uh, the last time I actually ran it as a DM, it, it was a meat grinder. It tore everybody up. So I'm trying to tone it down. I'm trying to make it a little more survivable and fun. Uh... Because it, it was fun for me. Like, I thought it was, a, it was a good time. And then they played it. They were like, oh, that was horrible. I hated that. So I'm trying to make it a little bit more fun uh, for people other than, than me. So I'm working on that. Uh, the In reflection. Yeah, back to that. In reflection of the, of the session, I realized that I really did a poor job s describing anything and everything. I really didn't describe much at all. Like, I kind of relied on the previous descriptions because they were already in there. But it was Paul's first session. Like, I, re I really should have described something, anything, more than one thing. I think I described the bugbears because uh, they, cause, cause they were new. I mean, they fought that one uh, clang or whatever. They would fought that one guy. Um, and, but they were fighting these bugbears, and I kind of described described them and I re-described the Nothic and we looked at the picture of the Nothic but I never described the red brands I never described really anything and then afterwards I felt I felt terrible it was just like you know I'm all about creating the environment and the vermicillitude or whatever like the immersion and uh, I just felt like I didn't really nurture any of that at all uh, but everybody's like oh yeah it was great 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 you know I loved it but uh, to me, I was like, I could have done that a lot better. But again, really good pacing. We really covered a lot of ground. We didn't drag on at all. Uh, and that was really good. And the way we kind of wrapped up all of Fandolin with a bow on it, super tight. Uh, I liked all of that. Uh, yeah, it went really well. Uh, the next session's October 17th, I think. It's October something. And... Um, Hopefully we'll have everybody for that one, and I think they're going to go to Thunder Tree. So uh, I don't know if I'll be able to finish Thunder Tree while we're there, but uh, that'll be pretty interesting. So if we do Thunder Tree, uh, maybe a two-parter, and then they'll wind up probably at Cragmaw Castle and be able to do that in one session.
because I do want to do random encounters between Thunder Tree and Cragmaw. I kind of have avoided a lot of random encounters because it kind of drags things out. Um, and this is a pretty populous area. Uh, like I get random encounters and whatever, and it's like a you know staple of D and D. So I don't mean to neglect it, but uh, it does. It, it just kind of pads it. And I feel like right now I have so much content, I don't really need to pad it. Like, I'm just kind of going from, from like, quality content to quality content to quality content. Kind of like, tell the story. Uh, but I do want to get a couple random encounters. I'd like to get them, you know, a Sturge fight. You know, I'd like to get them, you know, maybe an Owlbear or something. Like, I'd like to get some regular fights. Um, I'd like to uh, create a, a challenge that they can overcome without fighting. You know, in the wild, like something that they can they can overcome in like the typical D and D uh, fashion. You know, um, so that's kind of that's kind of where I am on that. Um, again, everything's going well. Plenty of time to plan. I still like the monthly cycle. Uh, I'd like to get people more active in Discord, but is what it is. Seems to be going okay. All right. Uh, so that's my wrap up. That was probably my longest one, 16 minutes. All right. So thanks. Uh, have a good weekend and game on.